Hi there. Welcome to my tutorial on conducting a stress analysis in Autodesk Inventor. Um, first of all, I apologize for the microphone. This is my um, not good headset, so sorry if I sound a little scratchy. Um, before you get started, make sure that you have a completed assembly. So I'm in Autodesk Inventor. I have it assembled. In this case, it's my uh, reindeer, yard art reindeer with all of the parts attached to it. You can see them all here in the assembly pane. And um, with all of it unpinned, none of it's grounded, you can tell, <coughs> excuse me, tell that it's ready to go because when I pick up one piece, the rest of it comes with it. Each of my parts also has a material assigned, um, and there's nothing left with the generic material. So as long as I have materials assigned to all of my parts, and my parts are all properly constrained, I'm ready to go on to the next part. So the next part is um, finding the environment tab, and then on the ribbon, you will look for the stress analysis option. So when you open the stress analysis, um, at the first, there's really nothing you can do except the one option that's available to you, which is to create a study. And Inventor's going to ask you some questions. You can just click OK. Everything there is fine for our purposes. So once we hit OK, uh, it brings up the properties over here in the model uh, viewer of what our stress analysis is going to entail. So the things that Inventor requires before you can conduct an, um, a stress analysis is, is, first of all, your model needs to sort of be pinned to the ground. If you don't have some part of your model um, stuck in place, it won't run a simulation. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use the constraints. So up here in the ribbon, there's a spot for constraints. And I'm going to use a fixed constraint, which basically just means I'm going to glue something to the ground. It's going to glue it in place. So I'm going to choose the bottom of my reindeer's base. And that is my um, fixed constraints. You'll be able to tell that it's fixed in place because the little white um, constraint uh, icons appear. And then just hit OK. You can see them appear under the model tab. Hey, those are fixed in place. Excellent. So my reindeer ought to now um, stay together and the feet uh, will stay in place. <clears throat> the other thing that I should really do before I go any further just to check for any mistakes is quickly put my um, reindeer into mesh view. And this just makes sure that there aren't any issues with the geometry. So if Inventor finds something it doesn't like, it can throw error messages at this point. But if you click mesh view and you get indeed something that looks like um, sort of stained glass, it means that Inventor is able to take all of those shapes that you created and make imaginary um, geometry, like basically in its um, computer brain right now, it's now thinking of this as solid objects. As long as it does that, you're in good shape. You can turn that back off. So now we need to apply forces. And the two forces that we're going to apply to our reindeer is, well, gravity, because gravity acts on everything. So I'll click on that button first. Now the only thing that Inventor needs to know is, okay, which way is gravity pointing? So this arrow here allows you to select something um, to choose to make the direction of gravity. So I'm just going to flip my reindeer over, kind of zoom in on his belly. And this is the surface that makes you get the surface that's pointing downward. So this is parallel to the ground. And I'm going to click on it. And when I do, an arrow appears. Now, it's a little hard to see. So if I hit the Home button, you can see that right now gravity is pointing, well, up. That's a problem. So if gravity is pointing the wrong direction and you'd like it to point downward, you can just click on the Direction button and now gravity is pointing the correct way. This number, this magnitude, um, that's acceleration due to gravity, and this is the correct acceleration due to gravity for objects on Earth. So you can go ahead and leave that, and then just hit OK. So now I have gravity. So right now, if I ran a force analysis, it would just tell me um, where the stresses on this object would be as it was sitting there. But we want to do better than that. We want to exert a 50-pound force on the side of our deer. So I will go ahead into, um, again, up here in the loads. Loads are uh, forces or pressures that you can apply to your model. And I'm going to choose a force. Um, again, it asks where do you want to apply the force. So if I click on there and pick the location, I want to apply the force to my reindeer there. How much? I'm going to apply a 50 pound force. And if you decided you wanted it in the other direction, you can do the same thing you did there, change the 
the direction of the arrow, but this is perfectly fine. So now I have um, an arrow pointing at my reindeer with that 50 pound force. The other arrow is gravity. Looks good. So I'm going to hit OK. As with everything else in Inventor, you can see what's going on in the model view. So if I open up the load tab, you can see, oh, yep, there's gravity in that force that I just applied. Here are the constraints. You can actually, in here, at any moment, change the materials on your um, reindeer. So if you needed to, you could right-click over there and, and change it to assign materials. So if you wanted to change your um, reindeer from plywood to, I don't know, white oak or something, you could do that there. The other interesting thing is that um, Inventor automatically shows you this is all of these contacts. These are all the constraints that I set when I was putting my model together um, using uh, the assembly features in, in my assembly. So all of the different um, mate and flush constraints that I used are all listed right there, and uh, Inventor recognizes that those are places where my model is bonded together. So with that, um, I'm ready to go ahead and simulate. And I just come up here and I click on the little rainbow colored simulate button. And um, it says you're conducting one study in one configuration and that looks great. So we hit run. And it's going to perform its calculations as it applies those different forces to the um, imaginary mesh. And when it's done, it gives you um, an example, a readout of where the stresses on your model are. So I can kind of zoom in, and, and I know that based on this, the most likely place that my reindeer is going to break would be up here where that red is. So this would indicate areas of high stress. Now, if you look in the model tab, there's a bunch of different um, kinds of stresses. This is a kind of stress that is um, it's really a uh, summarizes how much um, energy is sort of stored in an object that has been strained, so sort of elastic energy. I'm not really, I'm kind of oversimplifying this a little bit. Um, but that's a pretty good indication of where your model is going to break. Um, the other one, the first principal stress, um, that would be just, I believe, this uh, horizontal force that's being applied to your model. Um, so you can kind of look at these and see what the other principal stresses are. My personal favorite, though, is displacement. Um, you can see, you can actually see it if I go over here to my view cube and look at my um, reindeer dead on, that in under that amount of stress, the plywood actually bends. So these colors up here indicate what, what's the farthest distance from where it started. This is where my reindeer started, and under the, the stress, um, it's actually bent. So 50 pounds of of force in the form of wind or water or something came pushed on my reindeer, um, it would uh, bend and move out of the way. And the colors there, when we're in displacement, show you the parts that bend away the most. And yet the part that bends away the most is not necessarily the part that experiences the most stress. The part that experiences the most stress right here is where my reindeer antlers attach. So this is an interesting um, analysis and at that point if you wanted to you could do um, take a screenshot with the snipping tool so that you would have that for your um, engineering notebook but otherwise that is how you um, create a study in Autodesk Inventor you can always just finish the analysis and then you're taken back to the uh, assembly tab and you're ready to uh, to save and and uh, and or do other things with your assembly so thanks so much